The foundation of our legal argument is to assert our human rights. Worldwide, information on the history, prohibition and use of DACA has resurfaced thanks to the internet and social media. The propaganda campaign that has kept DACA abhorrent in the eyes of the general public is being exposed for what it is. Propaganda. The early history of the cannabis plant in Africa has been sketched together. Consensus is that it entered the African continent with Arab traders around the mid-12th century. Archaeological findings from Ethiopia date a pottery pipe containing cannabis remains to the mid-13th century. From there, it spread south through the Horn, Eastern and Central Africa, and down the Indian Ocean seaboard. There's a record of its appearance with Arab traders in East Africa from the late 12th century. There were two distinct migrations of the plant, through the Great Lakes into the Congo Basin from East Africa and up the Zambezi River with the expansion of Arab trade. As the Bantu nation spread south, so did the plant. 15th century references see its use in what is modern-day Malawi and the DRC. And so the name evolved. The Arabs brought the word bung from ancient Indian Sanskrit roots, which changed with African dialects. Bungi, Bangi, Lubange, as the plant entered the Congo Basin. Mbangi, Mbangi, Mbanzi, Nsangu, as it headed down the coast. By the time the Portuguese explorers navigated the Congo River, the plant was already on the African west coast. Dacha had spread down the eastern coast of southern Africa by the 17th century. It thrived in southern Africa's most fertile regions, Mozambique, Swaziland, Lesotho and eastern South Africa. This eastern region is still a major area of Dacha cultivation in southern Africa. The ancient Khoikhoi and San tribes inhabited a desert west of southern Africa. In some San dialects, to be drunk is Dawa. Another word, taka, or ta tra, means to be intoxicated. Experts suggest that the word dacha described a feeling, not a plant. Dacha was therefore a group of narcotic plants, amongst them leonotus or wild dacha, a narcotic plant similar to tobacco, and canna, which is locally referred to as nature's Prozac. What is known for sure is that by the time Jan van Riebeek and the Dutch East India Company arrived in 1652, the use of dacha, dacha, daka, daka was entrenched in southern African culture. Dutch settlers introduced smoking to the southern tribes as a result of their tobacco use. Prior to that, dacha was mostly eaten or made into a drink. The Dutch started trading in the local intoxicant. In fact, it would seem that they set about cornering the market. The earliest record is 1668, when Jan van Riebeek sent a party to Natal to bring back Dacha for the then called Hottentots, who they believe responded well to it. By the mid 19th century, many Dutch settlers set off on their great trek, journeying into the interior in search of a better life. Dacha became a part of many families' lives, both for medication and recreation. Many South Africans remember their grandmothers using dacha as a home remedy, as it had been for millennia. By the end of the 19th century, the British Empire, hungry for cheap or free labor, had set about colonizing large parts of the globe. Slaves were the ultimate cheap workforce. After the Boer War, the British imported Indian indentured labourers into Natal. These so-called coolie labourers were Hindus. Dacha was their sacrament. This didn't suit the Christian colonials who saw it as the work of the devil. They believed it slowed down the workforce, made them lazy and resulted in insolence and insanity. The same plant the Zulu nation had used to become fierce warriors just decades before. So in 1908, 
The first laws prohibiting the sale of Dacha were enacted in Natal on the strength of one British doctor's opinion. Trading of Dacha with the Indian community was banned. Segregation had started and the impossible task of prohibiting a weed began. In 1921, the Council of the League of Nations called for an advisory committee on the traffic in opium and dangerous drugs. In 1923, South Africa wrote to this committee, informing them that they'd missed putting Indian hemp on their list. By 1925, thanks to this timely reminder, Dacha was a prohibited substance worldwide. The South African government, after initiating the apartheid system, introduced the Report of the Interdepartmental Committee on the Abuse of Dacha in 1952. Referring to Dacha as the evil, much like the Swart Ghafar, it looked at Dacha use in each of the apartheid racial groups. There was no good news if you were black or colored. Draconian laws gave these forces a convenient excuse to arrest thousands of non-whites. Seizure of property, impounding vehicles, presumption of guilt. These laws are enforced in this manner to this day. By the early 1970s, the so-called hippie culture had arrived. More and more white people started using Dacha. These white Dacha users were seen as undesirable, counter-revolutionary, and were seen to be politically motivated. The apartheid government saw this counter-culture as a threat to their Calvinistic moral values. So in 1971, the Abuse of Dependence Producing Substances and Rehabilitation Act kicked in with a vengeance. That act was amended in 1992 to come into line with international treaties. This act states that Dacha is a Schedule I, undesirable, dangerous, dependence-producing hallucinogen with no medicinal benefit whatsoever. So here we are, the 1992 Drugs and Drug Trafficking Act, the current law regarding Dacha in South Africa. Part 3 of Schedule 2 is inexplicably listing the cannabis sativa, Dacha, as an undesirable dependence-producing substance. It's in the same category as heroin and mandrax. The wording of the act reflects no scientific study on the part of the lawmakers. To lump Dacha with heroin and mandrax is ridiculous on all levels. Not included in the act are three more narcotic dependence producing substances. Alcohol, nicotine and caffeine. Alcohol and tobacco are merely regulated, not legislated. Tobacco related death in South Africa exceeded 44,000 in 2010. There has never been a recorded death attributed to Dacha. Never, ever, anywhere, anywhere in the world. world. Our government has labelled Dacha as dangerous and undesirable. Well, we're telling you that it's not. We know that what we're advocating is going to be abhorrent to some of you. Worldwide information on the history, prohibition and use of the plant has resurfaced thanks to the internet and social media. The propaganda campaign that has kept Dacha abhorrent in the eyes of the general public is being exposed for what it is. Propaganda. Humans have been using the Dacha plant for thousands of years. The Dacha couple want to set the record straight. We are not saying that using Dacha is for everyone. Sure, it is the world's most popular illicit substance and the overwhelming majority of occasional frequent or heavy users have no adverse short or long-term effects from it whatsoever. However, people predisposed to mental health conditions or people who are getting over some sort of mental instability, for instance, need to exercise caution when it comes to Dacha use. Teenagers, by virtue of this stage in their development, are drawn to experimentation due to prohibition Dacha is freely available from all the wrong places. Teenagers should be made aware of the dangers of these environments. It can make weak HIV patients strong again. It even cures some cancers. There has been no reliable scientific research conducted in South Africa. All reports that do exist are there to uphold the existing propaganda and are commissioned by prohibitionists. In South Africa, it is impossible to get 
permission for the necessary independent studies. This is unfortunate for a country that has brought the world many scientific and medical breakthroughs. Also unfortunate for a country with one of the most liberal constitutions in the world. Cannabis has been available as medicine for more than 15 years in some places. There were no reports of anarchy or the disintegration of societies. Hordes of addicts rang the mock. Far from it. Alcohol-related incidents decrease in places with more liberal DACA laws. Drinking habits decrease. Driving fatalities are down. And interestingly enough, so are suicide rates. The foundation of our legal argument is to assert our human rights. It is our right to use this plant for self-medication, introspection and relaxation. In the context of society, it is akin to freedom of speech and freedom of movement. Our democratic freedom allows us to make many legal decisions about things that could kill us. Skydiving, unprotected sex, playing rugby, owning a rattlesnake, using a 16-seater taxi. None of these carries the threat of a criminal record. Why should we be persecuted for a plant that can't kill us? The punishment far outweighs the crime. What crime? Who's the victim? How can there be a crime with no victim? That's irrational. Jail, fines, compulsory addiction rehabs, suspended sentences, criminal records. The most harmful side effect of DACA is being caught. DACA users are easy targets and this creates tremendous potential for police corruption. Prohibition has landed the plant in the hands of organized crime. Prohibition of DACA is costing you, the taxpayer, millions of rand. Arresting, charging, trying, incarcerating, rehabbing, suspending hundreds of thousands of DACA users. Many rehabs are full of young DACA smokers who are no more addicted to DACA than they are to sugar or coffee or driving fast. The war on DACA cannot carry on. It is unwinnable. It is a prolific plant. No government in the world has successfully eradicated it. How could they? The Dacha couple wants to inform South African citizens of the truth about the many positive aspects of the most vilified plant in the history of humanity. Education is the key. The 21st century is beset with problems, and we don't think Dacha should be one of them. It's time to relax the draconian stance on Dacha. Follow the lead of countries like Portugal, Spain, Israel, Argentina, Colombia, the Czech Republic, and 16 states of the United States of America. Let's learn from their experiences. China exports an estimated 300,000 tons of hemp around the world every year. You are a criminal in South Africa if you germinate one hemp seed. Does this sound rational to you? Food. Fuel. Fiber. Medicine. Inspiration. Creation. Relaxation. Find out for yourselves the benefits of the most talked about plant on the planet. Decriminalization and excessive legislation was the 20th century. We, the DACA couple, are looking forward to the 21st century solutions in South Africa. DACA prohibition started here. Let's end it here. Well, Bob, that's 300 million users. $10 a month average, and I'm a conservative? What does that sound like to you? Sounds like a business bill.